Profitability measures. Now we are going to discuss what are probably the most widely used measures. They all have the main purpose of measuring how efficiently the firm manages its operations and assets. The profit margin. Profit margin equals net income divided by sales. Our net income was $343,000 and our total sales were $2.4 million. This says that our company generated 15 cents for every dollar in sales. Earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization margin. A commonly used measure of profitability is the earnings before interest, tax, and amortization margin. This is a measure of before tax operating cash flow. The earnings before interest, tax, and depreciation amortization adds back non-cash expenses and does not include taxes or interest expenses. Earnings before interest and tax depreciation and amortization looks more directly at operating cash flows than does the net income. The earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization margin is calculated as earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization divided by sales. In our example, we have $1 million in earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization, and $2.4 million in total sales. This gives us an earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization margin of 0.4166. Obviously a high margin is more desirable because it means that there are lower expenses relative to sales. However, this may not always be the best scenario. If a company increases its sales volume, it will more than likely decrease its profit margin. This is not a bad thing if the overall effect was an increase in net profit. Margins can also be extremely different for different industries. Grocery stores usually have very low profit margins, usually around 2%. In contrast, mining and crude oil production businesses usually have high profit margins, around 23%. Return on Assets Return on Assets measures the profit a company earns for each dollar in assets that it owns. It is most commonly calculated as net income divided by total assets. In our example, we have $363,000 in net income and our total assets are $3.454 million, which gives us a return on assets of 10.51%. Return on equity. Return on equity is the true bottom line ratio because it measures how well the company performed relative to its equity. In other words, by what percent did the firm increase its value, the shareholder's wealth? Return on equity is usually calculated as net income divided by total equity. In our example, again, our net income was $363,000 and our total equity was $2.353 million, giving us a return on equity or an ROE of 15.4%.